Hello everybody, how nice to see you again. Welcome back to Programming the DIY Gamer to be your awesomest gaming console. Uh, you might recall that last week what we did was we created a system that allowed us to use the buttons to move a dot around the screen and obviously that dot can become our spaceship and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to make that dot into a spaceship, the guy that's going to be doing all the cool uh, dodging and moving around the screen. Uh, so how do we do that? Now, the key thing, of course, is that we, we already know whether we're set, reading which switch and which direction we have to move the thing. So we're going to go up. So we, as we push up, it goes up. If we push down, it goes down. What we need to do now is say, every time we draw that pixel to the screen, we want to not just draw one pixel, but three pixels. Remember the three pixels we drew for the spaceship? We want to do the exact same thing, but this time listening to the button positions. In order to do that, we, we're going to make our lives a little bit easier by bringing up one of our old uh, programs, which was the one that we first drew, drew the ship in, and we're going to copy that grid, that commented grid, and we're going to paste it into our program. So we can use this to rem remind ourselves how we have to draw the, sh the spaceship into the screen. So right now, the way it works is we're using the ship Y and the ship X, right? The ship Y and X are these variables that contain the value for the X and the Y position in the sort of 2D grid. So when I say the ship, let's say the ship X is 5 and the ship Y is 1. Let's go look at our grid. Ship Y is 1, this row here, but ship, sorry, this row here, but the ship X is 5. So that's where the dot will draw, okay? But of course, what we want to do is actually we want to draw a ship that looks more like this. Remember, little dot, 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 little L shape. So how do we do that on the drawing section? Let's just set the, reset these back to zero. Let's go down to where we're actually drawing the dots. So this is where we draw the dot to the display. Now we want to draw two more dots, right? We want to draw the, the top dot and the dot to the right. So I'm going to copy and paste those that line of code three times. So how do we draw if the ship X and the ship Y? Let's 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 do that test again. If the ship X is set to uh, five and the ship Y is set to one, so ship Y is one and the ship X is five, right? So that's the one that we just drew in. How do we draw that in relation to the ship X and Y? And how do we draw that in relation to the ship X and Y? So if that's our ship X and ship Y, then that will be what? Moving up. What is moving up? Y is equal to 1 there, and Y is equal to 0 there. So going up is actually, moving up is actually subtracting 1 from Y, right? And then moving to the right is what? X is 5 over here, and X is 6 over there. So moving right is actually adding one to X. So now that we know how to draw, uh, well, what moving up and moving to the right is all about, let's look down at these two lines we just copied. So the first line that we had that we copied was drawing that first one in there, right? That's the X and Y position. Now we're gonna draw the next one, which is that one over there, which is one up. And what is one up? It is Y minus one, but the X is the same. So we just say Y minus one. And then the one on the bottom right, this one here, is going to be, the Y is uh, the same position as our first one. Yeah, look at that. But our X is increased by one. So we're going to go X plus one. And now we're going to upload that and let's see what happens. Okay. So, oh, look at that. You see how it started? To the right, that's because if you remember in the beginning, I set my ship Y is equal to 1 and my ship X is equal to 5. So that's why it started its first position at X equals 5 and Y equals 1. So now let's move down. But look, check it out. That's our ship. Cool. Our ship is moving beautifully across the screen. But here's a little problem. Check this out. What happens when I go too high? Oh, look at that. Something weird happens. Let's try to go all the way to the bottom. Okay, the bottom is fine. Let's go all the way to the right. Ah, the right doesn't work. Let's go all the way to the left. The left works fine. So the left and the bottom are fine. And the reason for that is because our very first X and Y is that bottom left-hand corner dot. So in other words, it can't go, we're already constraining it 
to be within the boundaries on the left hand side and the bottom. If you remember correctly, remember we did these, these if statements, if the ship, dot, uh, ship y is less than zero, the ship y is equal to zero. Well in that case, let's look at that. If the ship y is less than zero, look at that. If it goes up one more, ah, okay. So ship y can go higher because that's the pixel that we're, we're constraining. Now what we have to do is constrain the top pixel, okay? So actually, what we're gonna say there is, if the ship Y is less than one, then make sure the ship Y doesn't go beyond one, right? So let's see if that works, just constrain to the top. I'm gonna to upload that. Right, so let's try it, go all the way down, fine, we already know that, let's check the up. Yes, perfect. Now the only other thing we have to do is the right. Okay, so we, let's do the right. So the right hand side is when X is greater than seven is off the edge, right? So seven is on the edge, I should say. Eight is off the edge, right? So if it's greater than seven currently is what we're detecting. But we want it to be actually one over to the left of that because the left is actually the sixth position because remember we're drawing that extra dot on the right of that, the seventh position. So if X is greater than six, ship X is equal to six. Let's see if this works. Uploading. Okay, let's move to the right. Boom, doesn't go past it. Let's go to the left, good. Up, doesn't go up, perfect, down, perfect. So we've now solved the problem of constraining and moving our ship around the screen, perfect. Well done everyone. Now what we're gonna do, is a couple of things I'd like to talk about which, because our code is starting to get a little bit bigger. The first thing is keeping it safe. So what we're going to do there is we're going to say save file, save, and then it's going to bring up a little document. I'm going to, I mean, a little find a window. I'm going to type in this example, which is draw a ship on the screen and move it around. Saved. Great. Perfect. I've now saved myself a lovely little file, which I can always open again so that I don't have to rewrite it from scratch every time or watch this amazing video over and over again. The other thing I'd like to suggest we do is that we create this thing called a new tab. Now, you can't actually read that if it's going off screen. Let me fix that so you can. So if I click on that little down arrow, you see it has this option to say new tab. So I click on that. I choose the name for the new file. I'm gonna call that uh, grid. And now look what it's done. It's created a, a new little tab at the top, uh, top there. You see there's my normal code and then there's my next tab called grid. So what I'm gonna do and put in grid, well, I'm obviously going to cut, cut and paste the grid straight into that. So now it's not messing up my first page of code. It's much easier to read and I can always refer back to it if ever I want to see um, the referencing. It might, makes our life much easier. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do just to make things even more awesome is I'm going to introduce you to this concept of functions. Now, let's look at this. We've got this thing called void setup and we've got this thing called void loop. Now, these are both functions. The setup function is an important one, where, as, we, as we already discussed. It's the one where we start, we set up everything in the beginning before we start running the code constantly. Okay, and the loop is exactly what it says it is. It's the loop that happens forever. But we can create our own functions, right? So the function I want to create now is going to be called, I have to always say void in the beginning because the void actually references what the results of the function are going to be. In this case, the results aren't going to be a value as such. They're just going to be, they're just going to do something for me on the screen. So void, because there's no value being spat out. Um, void, and I'm going to call this draw ship to screen. And I have to put brackets in there, just like my setup in my loop. And I have to put curly brackets in there. Very, very important. Okay, so now, Remember what I said before, the curly brackets are actually, they help the um, development environment, the Arduino software to understand at what point, uh, at what, what section of the code relates to a particular function. Okay, so the loop function has this curly bracket, which ends over here, so that's all loop. The ship, the draw ship to screen function starts there and ends there. It helps you by showing you exactly where. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut out this part here, the gamer display update stuff, cut it out, give myself some more space, and I'm gonna put it over there. So now, in my code, all I have to do to update the screen is say draw ship to screen. Remember the brackets, semicolon. Right, so now what happens is, I'm gonna upload that. And let's see if it still works the way we expected it to. There it is. 
Does it still work? Yes, it still works. Does it still work? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Perfect. What else could we do with respect to our um, cleaning up of the code? Well, we could do something else like, for example, we could take all of this out, all the constraining and the reading of the switches. We can delete all that. We can create another function. We can call that void um, read switches and constrain um, variables. Remember the curly brackets? And I'm going to cop, I'm going to paste Apple V. There it is. Done. And now I should just be able to call it there. So now let's look at our loop. Our loop function is so much simpler. It's only one, two, three, four, five lines of code. Makes my life, oh dear, that didn't work. Interesting, that doesn't understand. Why? Because that I spelt that wrong. So look at that, there's two T's there. And look at this one here, there's no extra T there. So I'm gonna delete that. Let's try and compile that again. Does it still work? Yes, it constrains. Yes, it reads beautifully. Yes, it draws the, so the ship. And look how beautifully organized my loop function is. That is the end of this lesson. In the next class, we're going to do all sorts of wonderful things, but I won't tell you about that now. You will have to watch it for yourself.